first I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present the RSID series of forensic body fluid identification tests. I'm going to talk about the history and the background of how we got started, and then I'm going to go into some detail on the science and how to use these tests in forensic daily practice. First, um, a description of who our lab is and how we got started. We are a small private laboratory outside of Chicago. We are fully accredited and inspected by four different agencies for forensics, paternity, and human genetics. We got started in developing new body fluid tests with a contract from the FBI. From this contract, we developed a series of body fluid tests all based on antibodies, and I'll go into some detail in a moment. We now have four lateral flow strip tests, one each for semen, saliva, blood, and urine. RSID stands for Rapid Stain Identification. We have also developed a series of tests for the identification of spermatozoa from sexual assault evidence. I'm not going to talk about these today. They will make a uh, discussion um, on another day about sperm highlighter. We have three different forms of sperm highlighter, and I'll talk about those at another presentation. How is forensic body fluid identification performed? We identify the source of the DNA based on biomarker identification. We identify the biomarker and we assume we can identify the body fluid. This is helpful in that using biomarker for source attribution makes it a simple test. The bad part is that if the identification is only as good as the biomarker itself. If the biomarker is poor or is found in different body fluids, there's no way to fix that using the test. And the unfortunate part, at least as compared to DNA testing, is that forensic body fluid identification has not kept pace with the better science that now goes on in many forensic laboratories. It's very important for DNA analysts and for biology analysts to understand the scientific basis of the markers they are using. All markers have strengths and weaknesses, and it's important for the analyst to understand the role of body fluid testing in performing forensic analysis. All of the tests I'm going to show you today are based on lateral flow technology. Here I have a diagram of a lateral flow test. If you open up the cassette, you will find that it's actually fairly complicated with a number of components. I'm not going to go into these components in detail, but there's an assembled strip that fits inside the cassette. That strip has at least four components. There's a conjugate pad where the detection antibody is presented. There is a membrane that has two stripes, which are only visible after the test is run. There is a wick at the top of this material, which absorbs the liquid after the run is completed. And then there's a backing card that holds all three of these components together. The final component is inserted into a cassette, and that is what I am sure you are used to for performing lateral flow. The uh, window where the results are observed is shown here, and the sample window where 100 microliters of the extract and running buffer are, are put in is shown here. All of the tests I'm going to show you today use this technology. The first test I'm going to talk about is RSID semen. The format, as I've discussed, is a lateral flow strip. The biomarker we are using is called human semenogelin, abbreviated SG. The antibodies that are used in the test are two mouse monoclonals. They recognize non-overlapping epitopes on semenogelin. One of these antibodies, the detection antibody, has been labeled with a gold particle. The sensitivity of the test is below 50 nanoliters of semen. 
So that's a thousandth of a drop. There is no known reaction with RSID semen except for the biomarker. That is, it is both body fluid specific and species specific. The test is, re is visual. That is, you will look at the lateral flow and determine whether the test is positive or negative. And the assay takes 10 minutes to run after the appropriate extract has been added to the sample window. I'm going to talk about saliva, very similar technology. It is again a lateral flow strip test. The biomarker is human salivary alpha amylase. Again, we have developed two mouse mon monoclonals that recognize non-overlapping ep epitopes on salivary amylase. The detection mode is again a 50 nanometer gold particle. The sensitivity is below 50 nanoliters of saliva, and I'll actually show you some of that data today. There is no hook effect with RSID saliva. The reaction, however, with human milk and fecal samples, both of which contain alpha amylase, can be shown. This is not a confirmatory test because the biomarker can be identified in at least two different body fluids. The readout is again visual and you would read the results after 10 minutes upon addition to the sample window. The third test I'm going to talk about now is RSID blood. It is again a lateral flow immunochromatographic test. The biomarker here is not hemoglobin but is a red blood cell membrane called glycophorin A. We have again developed two mouse monoclonals which recognize non-overlapping epitopes of glycophorin A. The detection mode is again a colloidal gold particle. The sensitivity here is approximately 100 nanoliters of blood. There is no high dose hook effect. This is a uniquely specific test only Homo sapiens react with RSID blood. The readout is visual, and again, you will read the results at 10 minutes. We have developed a buffer, a universal buffer, we call it, that allows the analyst to make one extract and then to test either blood or saliva or semen on either RSID blood, RSID saliva, saliva or RSID semen. So it's one extract with the universal buffer, and you can test on any one of the three RSID tests I have listed here. We have a fourth test that is not quite the same as the other three. It is, again, a lateral flow test. The antigen that RSID urine detects is TAM horsefall. It, it uses two rabbit, rabbit polyclonal antibodies, and here we have labeled the antibodies with latex beads. The sensitivity of this test is approximately 5 to 10 microliters of urine, and this test will react with other species, including higher primates, some dogs, and some horses. The readout is a visual, and here the test takes 15 minutes to run. So it's not quite the same as the other three but it can still be a useful test for laboratories that need to determine whether urine is on a sample or not. Here I'm going to describe in general terms how all the RSID tests are run. You would start off with a stain on a fabric and you would either harvest the stain on a swab or remove parts of the fabric itself. That material is then soaked in either extraction buffer, which is provided with each RSID kit, or in universal buffer. We recommend a minimum 15-minute soak or extraction time, at which point a small portion of the extract is removed, mixed with either the running buffer or the universal buffer for a final volume of 100 microliters. And that 100 microliters is then put in the sample well of an RSID cassette. Two results are possible. Either a single band is observed, in which case you know the test has been run appropriately, but the result is negative. 
that is demonstrated by the diagram of the cassette on the right, or there are two bands visible, in which case the test has detected the biomarker, and you can assume that the particular body fluid is now been identified. Here's an example of an experiment done with RSID saliva to show how sensitive this test is. Here we have made a standard extract and done a series of dilutions so that we can measure from five microliters of saliva all the way down to two and a half nanoliters of saliva. And although it may be hard to see through the computer, we can get a nice signal from as little as five nanoliters of saliva. I should mention that these are all extracts made from swabs and fabric. No liquid body fluid is added directly to the cassette. All of these tests are designed to be used from extracts from fabric or swabs. Here on the right hand side, we have shown the results of mixing four body fluids together, that is saliva, semen, blood, and urine. And as you can see, we have a robust signal showing that the other body fluids do not interfere. Here we have mixed extracts from three body fluids, blood, semen, and urine, and there is no positive result showing the specificity of RSID saliva. We have a tremendous amount of these kinds of data. I do not have time today to go over all of them, but I wanted to show you this one and one more where I discuss the, specific, the specificity of RSID blood. So here we have tested RSID blood, either a negative or a positive, or in this case, extracts from a ferret or two higher primates, a gorilla and a orangutan, and compared those extracts with RSID blood with a Serotec heme direct test, which is a similar lateral flow test made by another company, or hexagon, OBTI, which is another hemoglobin-based forensic test for blood. Only RSID blood is specific for humans. There is no reaction with ferret or gorilla or orangutan. However, both the Serotec and the Hexagon all react with these other species, showing the specificity of RSID blood is unique to a single species. Um, I can, here is an overview of RSID saliva in comparison with the other forensic methods for testing of saliva. This is the only lateral flow strip test. The other forensic tests for saliva are based on the enzymic activity of alpha amylase and have low specificity by definition and are not nearly as sensitive as RSID saliva. They are harder to use and take much longer to run. So in this example, RSID saliva is the most specific, is the most sensitive, and is the easiest to run of all the forensic tests for saliva. Here I have a similar analysis for RSID semen, where I've compared the results of RSID semen the results of using other lateral flow tests based on P30 or PSA, or searching for semen using acid phosphatase. This is the only confirmatory test for semen. All of the other uh, tests for semen have high false positive rates and are not as sensitive as RSID semen. This is the only confirmatory test. It's the highest sensitivity and it's the easiest test to use. I have a similar comparison for blood. Here, it's again a lateral flow strip test. This test is the most specific. It has no high dose hook effect, but it is not the most sensitive. Other hemoglobin based tests are far more sensitive than RSID blood. They are more sensitive than you need, but they do not have the specificity of RSID blood. I'm now going to talk very briefly about the ability to run these tests both in the laboratory and in the field. We have developed 
a field kit version for all of the RSID tests so that you can use them either in the laboratory or in the field. And we have developed a little handheld reader where you insert the cassette into the reader and it will tell you the result either positive or negative. You do not need the reader to use these tests, but it can be a convenience in the field or where the conditions are uh, not ideal. Uh, the field kit use is similar to that used in the laboratory, except we provide all of the components in the field kit. So we have prepared extraction tubes, disposable scissors, and disposable transfer pipettes. So all of the components needed to run an RSID test are in that kit. You can certainly develop your own field kit version, but here we've assembled the components. In summary, we have developed four lateral flow strip tests specifically for the forensic identification of body fluids. RSID saliva is useful as a screening test to test samples before they are sent to DNA and to screen sexual assault evidence. RSID semen is another screening test designed to detect semen from sexual assault evidence. It's the most specific test for seminal fluids. RSID blood, again, screening test before samples are sent to DNA. It is the most specific, but it is not the most sensitive. And we have RSID urine, which is the only lateral flow test for urine on the market. These tests can be used either in the laboratory or in the field. And we have two buffer options, either the universal buffer for RSID saliva, semen, and blood, or a dual buffer option for all four tests. RSID urine cannot be used with the universal buffer. And the last slide is my uh, phone and email contact information. A lot of the information and much more can be found on our website, which is listed here. I want to thank everyone for their attention. I would be happy now to take, to take any questions that you might have.